Welcome back to the channel where I provide regular cricket content on interesting topics. In today's video I am continuing to veer away from the skill and ability of some of the greats I often feature on the channel. Today instead I am going to continue to talk about luck, and specifically the unlucky cricketers over the years. This is of course part 2 of my rundown of the top 10 unluckiest cricketers of all time. Luck is a subjective term so I really don't think everyone will agree with me on these, but please do fire away in the comments with anyone I have missed. Let's get on with the top 5 then. Number 5, Alex Hales. I have mentioned that I am going to be making some videos on one day cricket soon, and Hales is sure to feature. I will always favor test cricket but when someone like Hales gets going in the shorter game it is fun to watch. He is one of perhaps 10 world-class limited overs players England has had at their disposal over the past 10 or so years. This is odd as an English fan who watched us get routinely smashed in the shorter formats for years and years growing up. But anyway, why does Alex Hales join my unluckiest cricketers list? Well like a couple of others already featured, for me Hales was extremely unlucky for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. In September 2017 the cricket world was shocked to see England hero Ben Stokes all over the news for the wrong reasons. He was of course involved in a fight outside a Bristol nightclub whereby he knocked another man unconscious. What has that got to do with Hales I hear you ask? Well for those who do not know, Hales was out drinking with Stokes that night. When the dust settled both men faced heavy sanctions from the England cricket board, with Hales banned for six matches and fined heavily. As far as I can work out he didn't really do anything wrong either. If Stokes hadn't have done what he did then no one would have raised an eyebrow to their night out. Instead Hales's career was tarnished and he didn't retain his place properly for years. I know he later tested positive for a recreational drug, but that too adds to me thinking he was unlucky. It was very much treated as a second strike, with a heavier ban than he would have received had it been his first. What we are left with is the fact that Hales lost the prime years of his international career due to Stokes punching some bloke in Bristol. That to me is unlucky, and earns him a place on my list. Number 4, Ian Bishop. I labored about if I should include players who suffered with injuries in this rundown. On one hand you could easily say that getting injured is very unlucky. But what I was worried about was the fact it would be one after another, from Simon Jones to Shane Bond. With that said however I did want to include Bishop as quite possibly his injury had a bigger impact on the history books than anyone else's. Due to his excellent commentary work it is easy to forget quite how good of a bowler he was at the start of his career. But then injury struck and he was left trying to make a comeback with the pace and skill clearly diminished. I am about to come out with a big claim so brace yourself, but had he not gotten injured, Bishop may have gone on to be the best West Indian quick of all time. If you think I have gone mad, in his first four years of playing test cricket he had a bowling average of 20.4. That's better than Ambrose, Marshall, Garner and anyone else you can name. It wasn't just the sheer figures either, it was the manner in which he was taking his wickets. Bishop at the start of his career had express pace, again probably the quickest of the West Indies attack. But then all that talk during his delivery stride put an almighty amount of stress on his back, and by the age of just 26 his best was behind him. He tried valiantly to return after long stints of rehab but he was never the same bowler again. So that bad luck of injuries robbed the world of possibly the best West Indian quick ever. It was not that it stopped him from a good career, in my view it stopped him from having a great one. That earns Bishop a spot on my list. Number 3, Don Bradman. How could I possibly include the most celebrated player in the history of the game in a collection of the unluckiest? While I appreciate it is a little bit from left field but here is my case for the Don being included. Firstly there is the obvious in that he was so cruelly left stranded on his godly batting average of 99.94, just an agonizing 4 runs shy of averaging 100 in innings. I know critics will say that he got out fair and square, but couldn't he have just nicked one down to third man for a boundary or something? If the rumors are true, Bradman was struggling to see due to having tears in his eyes in his last innings, again perhaps not luck but still adding to the theatre of his failure. The other reason in which the Don is included in my list is the years he lost due to the Second World War. He was arguably in his peak and his record would have been even more staggering had he not been rudely interrupted by Mr. Hitler. So there are my two reasons for including Bradman, and a quick well done to those in the comments of the first video who mentioned him. I thought I was alone with this thinking. Now on to my number 1 and number 2. Firstly no one so far has mentioned both in the first video and there is probably good reason for this. 
On my channel I usually like to keep the videos quite light-hearted, when you are making clips such as the fattest cricketers of all time you can't take things too seriously. However this video is going to take a somber turn for the next couple of minutes. That is because my number one and two most unlucky cricketers of all time are Philip Hughes and Sean Abbott. I didn't want to divide them up as first and second as it is such a sad subject that I don't want to sound like I am trivializing what is pure tragedy. But what I did want to highlight was that it is not just Hughes and his family who suffered from this incident, please spare a thought for the bowler of the bouncer, Sean Abbott. Just imagine for a second you are a bowling all-rounder. Not particularly quick but a 22-year-old with a passion for competition and a bright future in the game. Then playing against an experienced Aussie test player in a Sheffield Shield game you decide to try and catch him napping with a bouncer. It strikes him to the back of his head, he collapses to the floor. Any sign of aggression quickly drains from your face as he loses consciousness. The medics rush to the wicket, the stretcher comes out, but after an agonizing wait you learn tragically that he has lost his life. You weren't the first bowler to hit someone on the head, you certainly won't be the last either, but the rest of your life has changed and you hang a feeling of guilt around your neck every time you step out on the field. Then of course you have Hughes, a popular, charismatic, classically talented opening batsman. Someone who was just going out to bat as he had done for years and years, aware of the dangers of a cricket ball but never for one second considering this game you love would cost you your life. You were 63 not out and seeing the ball well when the young bowler dropped short with a well-aimed bouncer. Knowing the track is true and you are scoring fluently in that area you take on the hook, you miss and then the pain strikes before the lights go out. Saying that this was bad luck doesn't do it enough justice by a long stretch. So on that rather sobering summary I draw this video to a close. As ever, thank you all for watching and commenting on the videos. Until next time.